All right, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome once again. All right, so this is solving multi-step equations, and this is lesson 2.3. So let's get started on your bell work, ladies and gentlemen. Please make sure you guys have the appropriate lesson filled out in the corner, and please get started on this bell work. All right, we are gonna be on page 95 of your book, ladies and gentlemen, 95. So while I get ready for this, please go ahead and turn to that page, and then let's get started. Oh, there goes my pen. All right, so what I wanna make sure you guys understand it is the following, okay? Um, on page 95, well, before we get to that, let's solve this out. So remember we talked about yesterday, um, or the last time we spoke about this lesson. And on this lesson, ladies and gentlemen, what's the first thing you want to do? Uh, create the ultimate divide here, okay? And then on this ultimate divide, we're going to separate this variable and get it by itself. And so when you do that, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be we want to add 11 to both sides. Because if we do that, what are we doing? We're getting rid of this variable, having z by itself, because we don't put z plus 0. So it be z equals 26, right? And on this side, ladies and gentlemen, the great divide, get the variable by itself, okay? If you're gonna do that, it'd be subtracting, because that's addition, 2.4, let's subtract 2.4. When we do that, we drop down the W, whoops. Okay, that would be a zero equals, and then that is going to be a nine, that's a three, that's a four, and that is going to be a negative 4.3. A farmer planted 35 more acres. So, I don't know why I drew a two, that's weird. Uh, 35 more acres of corn this year than last year. If he planted 200 last this year, how much did he plant last year? That's the equation, ladies and gentlemen. Set it up, subtract 35 from both sides. X equals zero there. Give me the great divide. And then that would be 165. 165 acres you planted the year before, this year 200. All right, let's get started. So we're gonna be looking at mathematical principle eight, okay? Talking about utilizing patterns of repetition. Um, one thing I wanna make sure you guys are starting to go into, we're getting into the more complex equations. And if you have any questions as you move forward, please do. We solve single steps. The last lesson, now we're gonna move into ones with more than one operation. We will probably do a lot of drill and practice on this, ladies and gentlemen, to make sure you get used to moving things back and forth, left to right, so please be prepared to that. I will have the homework for this, uh, most likely in the comment section, so be prepared to do probably a lot of the drill and practice, like I said, to get used to the order of operations. All right, uh, at the top of your notes, you guys should have a multi-step equation definition. Please circle it and underline the definition. It doesn't look like this. You guys know I snipped the book, so it looks a lot like the book. All right, and as we go along, ladies and gentlemen, if you see any more highlighted vocabulary, because I really don't stop for that, circle, underline. You guys get the drift. Please annotate. All right, so multi-step equations. Great divide, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to get everything away from the cube. We're going to pull it all on that side. First step we want to do is we got to get rid of the we got to kind of do PEMDAS backwards, okay? And so the first thing you always want to do is add or subtract to get whatever's not attached to the variable away. So since plus 11 is not, we're going to do reverse PEMDAS this baby. Negative 11 on that side, negative 11. All right, so if we do that, what we've got left is 2Q. Now, remember, this is going to be always equals. So 2Q on this side, negative 11, that would be a negative 8. Okay, negative 11 plus 3. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what? Multiplication or division? Multiplication. Opposite of multiplication is division. So please make sure you remember, how are you going to get rid of that 2? You cannot subtract or, or add anymore. You have to divide by 2. Okay, if you divide by 2, 2 over 2 equals what? 1. We don't put 1Q, instead we just put Q. And that's going to equal, ladies and gentlemen, negative 4. There's your answer. 
B, woo B. First thing you see is a what? A fraction. Get rid of it. Let's multiply both sides by 12. Okay, if I multiply both sides by 12, what does 12 represent? Remember, ladies and gentlemen, 12 represents 12 over 1. Okay, 12 over 1. So, if I'm multiplying it by something with, in the bottom of the equation is the number 12. Okay, can you divide those out? Yes, because 12 divided by 12 is what? 1. All right, so that's why we do by 12. Cancels this side out, cancels that out. So, you're left with K plus 9 equals negative 2 times 12 is negative 20. Four. Now you have your addition. You want to do what? Subtraction. Okay? Subtract 9 from both sides. You do that. It's not k plus 0. We don't write that. Okay? Remember? It's just going to be... Sometimes I hate when I can't go that far back. K equals... And then if you have a negative number already, and you're adding more of a negative. Remember we talked about in class, this is like money. I owe somebody 24 bucks, okay? I say, hey, can I have more money? They give me more, and then how much do I owe them now? I actually owe them 33, negative 33. Now, you can check these answers, ladies and, my, ladies and gentlemen, by plugging them back into the equation, okay? So if I had negative 33 and I added nine to it, I would have a negative 24, Negative 24 divided by 12 is negative 2. That's how you can double check. All right, ladies and gentlemen, your turn. Pause the video, work on this. All right, most of you, hopefully you got this. First thing you wanna do is because reverse PEMDAS. So you gotta get this baby out of here. Great divide. If I'm gonna do something on this side, I gotta do it over here. So this ends up being 2A and it still equals 10. Then I divide it by two, A equals what? Five. Here's your answer there. This one, we have a beautiful fraction. Yay, get rid of it. How do you do it? You multiply both sides by the denominator, okay? Remember, it's a great wall. If you do that, you'd have N plus one, because remember, this is over one, so they cancel out. If that helps you, if I continue to do this and it helps you, ladies and gentlemen, please do. So you don't write one over one times. You get rid of the one and you just have that and it equals negative 30, okay? 15 times negative two. Then you would do what? Subtract one. If I subtract one from both sides, oh, forgot, let me change the color to purple. Subtract one, subtract one, whoops. Hard right on the tablet sometimes. One, sweet. It would be n equals negative 31. Ladies and gentlemen, you can put it back in if I put a negative 31 up here, okay? Uh, negative 31 plus one would be negative 30. Negative 30 divided by negative two is positive 15. Double check sometimes, make sure you get it right. All right, real world example, ladies and gentlemen. This would be on page 96 of your book. Please make sure, as we talked about before, I remember it on this one, in the upper left-hand corner, next to your notes on the left-hand margin, put example two, because this is not on your notes, okay? Example two, page 96, okay? That way, remember, we can tie it together. All right, Susan had a $10 coupon for the purchase of any item. So coupons, ladies and gentlemen, are usually negative items. Okay, so I know from, as I'm going along, a coupon somewhere along the line is gonna be negative 10. She's taking money off something. She bought a coat that was half its original price. Ooh. One half X. After using the coupon, Susan paid 125. So she used the coupon and her N is 125 before taxes. What was the original price of the coat? Write an equation for the problem, then solve it. Oh, look. I wrote it as I read it. Plus 10. Plus 10. If you do that, ladies and gentlemen, you would come across with what? One half X. So, or you can write it a different way. Let me undo that. So we'll go one half X 
equals 135. Then ladies and gentlemen, if you have an X on the other side, okay, what would you want to do? To get rid of that two, multiply it by two on both sides, two over one times two. All these cancel out. You got one over one. The only thing you got left is X. Remember, this is a great divide. So what is two times 135? Ladies and gentlemen, X equals 207. That's an expensive coat. She got a great deal. $270. And look, did I set it up right? <laughs> Yay, I sure did. Retail, your turn. You guys go ahead and try it and see if you can get this to, uh, to get to work. All right, remember, write it as it sets, ladies and gentlemen. All right, department store has sold three quarters of its formal dresses. So it sold three quarters of its dresses but 10 were returned. So what's gonna happen is, is you're gonna add in 10. Now the store has how many dresses? 62. How many were, were there originally? Now, I'm pretty confident that this is a plus 10. We'll find out in a bit. All right, so let's do the math, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'm gonna have to drop down a bit on this one over here, okay? Because I need the room. So, if I subtract 10 from both sides, let's start it off like that. Then I have three over five X equals 52, okay? Hopefully you guys all agree with that. Now, what would be the next step? We want to get rid of the fraction. In order to get rid of the fraction, I multiply it by the reciprocal, okay? Multiply it by five over three. Uh-oh, board's getting jumpy. Multiply it by five over three. If I do that, these cancel out. Cross multiplying, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. So what do you have left? X equals, right? Now, let's get our calculator out. Let's see if I did the calculation correctly. Da, 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 da. 52 times 5 equals divided by 3. Enter. Whoops, forgot. 260 divided by 3. Approximation 86. Hmm. 86. So I got 86 point, and then it was a repeating decimal. So the question is then, ladies and gentlemen, did I get it the right answer? Well, sometimes what you have to understand is if you're looking at this, should I have gotten a repeating answer right here like this? The answer to this, ladies and gentlemen, is no, I should not have, okay? So what would happen if I were to backtrack on this problem, okay? So one of the reasons I wanted to show you doing this is so that sometimes you guys can try the answer and see if it works, and it didn't. All right, so let's try this. What happens, ladies and gentlemen, if I were to erase, let's erase this sign here, okay, and say 10 were returned, and if I put a negative right here, okay? Now let's try it. So now we're gonna add 10 to both sides. Three over five X equals 72. Now, let's do the reciprocal. 5 over 3 times 5 over 3. And let's see what we get this time. Grabbing your calculators. Okay. We get 72 times 5 divided by 3. Whoops, I don't want to do it that way. Times 5. Let me divide that by 3. And I get oh, an even number. X equals 120. So you see, sometimes you might make a mistake. And then when you do the math, you figure out, well, that's repeating, that can't be right. So change the sign, because you're not always gonna get it right, maybe the first time, but this is called troubleshooting, ladies and gentlemen. In the real world, 
you will troubleshoot everything. When I was an airplane mechanic, I did. When I did finances, I troubleshot stuff. Realizing that if one, if things are off balance, you have to find the balance. There you go. So, what was the balance? We switched the signs. It wasn't plus, it was minus, okay? Good, now let's work on the next problem. Len, red, three quarters. So hopefully you guys worked on this yourselves, tried the plus, you're by yourself and see what happens, or maybe you were smart enough and you did the negative right away and you got it right the first time. That would be awesome if you did. All right, Len, Len red, three quarters of a graphic novel over the weekend. Monday, he read 22 more pages. If he read 220 pages, how many pages does the book have? Oh, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Simple setup. As I'm reading it, I'm writing it down. You guys should do the same thing. Don't get scared, because guess what? If you get it wrong, you won't. You'll come up with a non-whole number. And if it's a word problem, you're not gonna come up with a repeating digit. You're gonna come up with a real uh, integer, okay? A rational number. So, now we have three over four x equals, and then minus 22, so that would be 198. Sorry, I almost thought of a different number. All right, 198. Now, what do we wanna do now? Well, let us multiply it by the reciprocal. These would then cancel out. X is by itself. X equals. I can't do that in my head. Let's get the calculator. Doobie doobie doo. Doo doo. 198 times 4. Uh, divided by 3. Uh, how many pages does the book have? 264. So, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations on that, okay? Counting integers. This is a more complicated one I know you guys struggle with. This will be on AZ Merit. I saw it a lot last year. I saw it on, I didn't see it on AZ Merit. I saw it on our CBAS testing when we kind of did a little study on it. Know what this means, consecutive integers. So if I'm trying to get an integer uh, and I'm counting, so the original number would be one. What is the next integer? Well, it, it, it would be n plus one, and then it'd be n plus two, so that's where you get these. Then, ladies and gentlemen, if you want a consecutive even or even a consecutive odd, it's always gonna be n plus two. So if I started at zero, I wanna know all the even numbers. Well, the next one is two, so zero plus two is two, okay? Then it would be plus four. So what is zero plus four? Four, so you, that's how you get zero, two, four, six, eight. Hopefully you guys understand that concept, okay? So write an equation for the following problem, then solve it. Find three consecutive odd integers whose sum is 57. So we're starting with n and we're looking at odd. So if you look at your notes, remember or that chart above, odd numbers are n plus two, whoops, and then it'll be n plus four. And that equals what? 57. Now do I do these little tick marks like this or the commas? No, you should do adding which is why it's set up right here and right there, ladies and gentlemen. Now, what do you do? You combine the like terms. So, n plus n, so basically remember, you're just adding in n's. That's like saying I have a, a three right here. So if you add up a three and you have another three and another three, you would add them all together. So you have three n's. And then two plus four is six equals 57. Now you solve, negative six, negative six. When you set that up, you have 3n equals 51. Now, let's use our calculator because what are we gonna do? Oh, I can do this in my head, I think. Let me extend the page. We are going to divide by what? Three, because this is multiplication. Opposite of multiplication is division. So what would be that? That would be n equals, first number is gonna be a one. If I divide that by Three, you're left with 21, seven. So the first number is 17, but it says I need three consecutive odd numbers. So what is 17 plus two? 17 plus four, your next number is going to be 19, 21.
There you go. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you find consecutive numbers, okay? Please make sure you guys understand how to do that. Please work on this. Find three consecutive integers with the sum of 21. You try. Use the chart above. All right, last thing on the docket today, ladies and gentlemen, consecutive integers would be x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2. Sorry, that's a horrible one. X plus 2. And what does that equal? 21. So how many x's do we have? 1, 2, 3. 3x three plus 3 equals 21. Solve it out, ladies and gentlemen. Relatively simple. Negative 3 on both sides, you'd end up with 3x equals 18. That is multiplication. Sorry, my numbers are getting a little crazy. Divide that by 3. Divide that by 3. x equals 6. So what are the numbers? It's 6. And then what is x plus 1? 7. 8. Don't forget to go back and solve it. Ladies and gentlemen, put that back. That is it for this lesson. Please look in the comment section for the homework, or if I don't have it updated yet, please make sure you talk to uh, somebody in class, or when you come see me, I'll give you an extra day to complete it. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, it's been my pleasure, and I will see you in class soon.